Hello, Happy New Year. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and we're in the cockpit of the India Fox Teco F-35C variant. We're approaching initial for the CVN-78 aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald Ford, and that's uh, moored off the southwest coast of Florida. We are approaching initial roughly 800 feet and 350 knots, and we're going to do a case one approach and a arrestor landing on the deck. Uh, I'll pause it around the uh, various points in the pattern and talk through what I'm looking at and how I'm doing it. Okay, so I'll pause it here just to get a look at the carrier. The carrier is expertly modeled. Um, it is a workaround based on the uh, limitations of Microsoft Flight Sim, but it's an India Fox Teco model. Uh, it comes with this aircraft carrier and also the LHA-6 USS America um, as another option for F-35B variants. Uh, it'll be released separately. I think it's $5 for the aircraft carriers just so they can uh, release it separately so that when they update the ships, they don't have to send out an updater for the uh, F-35. So there we go. Uh, here we're doing a case one style approach. If you haven't seen the video I did previous for the F-35B, uh, I'll put a link for that in the description below and at the end of this video. Things to figure out that I've, uh, or things to talk about that I've set up. Uh, the only thing I've really set up is I put the heading bug as roughly the aircraft carrier's line of advance. Uh, and I put the white line here, uh, the course bar on the uh, runway orientation or the landing area of the deck. Uh, if you don't get this line, you have to press CNTL and it'll cycle through uh, on the right hand side here. It's currently slave to GPS, but I don't have a waypoint uh, or GPS route in. It'll also go through VOR and TACAM as well. But it's useful as orientation. So I'll scan that during the pattern. Here we go. Upwind, no greater than a mile. Around about there or do. Idle, flight path mark around the horizon back pressure to slow the aircraft and we're looking to go downwind about a mile and a quarter to a mile and a half at a beam the carrier. Scanning the yellow bug for my reciprocal heading. Speed is less than 240 knots. There's the carrier and there's my reciprocal heading. Looking to keep 800 feet, that's my technique. Other things, other techniques may vary. Okay, so we'll pause it here just for uh, reference. We'll have a, look, a little look at the aircraft itself. Uh, by changing the uh, weights in the fuel section of the uh, simulator, you can get weapons added to this. Now bear in mind, if you buy this from the Microsoft uh, Flight Sim Marketplace when it gets released, then you will not have the ability to display the weapon. So you have to purchase it from anywhere other than the Marketplace. This is the point you should be turning final, it being the LSO or the landing areas when you start your left-hand turn. But remember this aircraft carrier is static, so I'm going to extend just a little bit before I turn uh, left. You can see that the aircraft is nose high, because obviously with slow speed. And on the head-up display, you can see the whiskey line is high, and that is your longitudinal flight datum, i.e. the nose of the aircraft is pointed up. But the flight path marker is on the horizon line which means the vector of the aircraft is actually uh, horizontal as it's going straight forward, even though the nose is pointed high. That's important later on. Other things to take in from the head-up display, a quick tour. You have your heading ribbon, so we're heading 093. You have your pitch ladder, so you've got plus 10, plus five, and zero uh, nose up, and minus five down here. That's your glide path or your attitude. Left-hand side is your speed, right-hand side is your altitude. Underneath that, you have a minus or a positive or a minus or the absence of a minus for your rate of climb or descent, and you have your rad alt. Left-hand side, you have your ground speed, you have your Mach number, you have the G that you're currently pulling, you have your alpha in units, and you have your uh, G that you, or the maximum G you've pulled since last time you've reset the G meter. Lower left, you've got your time in Zulu, lower right, you've got your steering information. Uh, this is GPS, but I haven't got a GPS route in. Uh, and that's a quick tour around the outside of the HUD. In the center of the HUD, you've got your angle of bank. So here being 0, 10, 20, 30, and then 45 in the tick marks. For the final turn, we'll be setting up for a 30 degree bank turn. Real critical information now is in the center. So I've already talked about the flight path marker. That's absolutely critical for knowing where your aircraft is going. You can see the staple on the right-hand side, and that will show when it's, to the, when it's placed as it is, just next to the flight path marker, 
you are at an on-speed AOA. So that's, that's where you're aiming to be when you do your final turn and your final approach. Now for this aircraft, with this fuel weight, now pretty heavy, but we'll continue anyway. For this aircraft, I'm looking for about 130 to 140 knots, and that should have the staple just to the right-hand side of the uh, flight path marker, and I'll demonstrate that as we go around the final turn and the final approach. On the left-hand side, now this is a really useful piece of information, the speed carrot. You can see the speed carrot is lower than my flight path marker, which just means I'm slowing down. If I push the power up, until the speed carrot is completely or perfectly next to the flight path marker, my speed will be stable. If I push the power forward, so I'm, uh, I've got excess thrust, then the speed carrot will be high and I'll be accelerating. So if you want to hold 140 knots for an approach, you'll pull the power back, you'll wait for the speed to get uh, correct, and then you push the power forwards until the speed carrot is a beam to the flight path marker and the speed will be stable. Really useful piece of information. Whilst I'm on the topic of uh, head-up displays, this is not a head-up display. As you can see, it is uh, in front of the instrument panel, or the MFD, and it's kind of following us around. There is a limit left or right, but it's it, essentially it's uh, simulating a helmet-mounted display. So it's following your head. It's not perfect, it's a workaround, but it's pretty decent in its uh, application. Okay, so I think we are about there. Uh, the other option when it becomes available is beta, and I think it's being released with the aircraft and a menu you have call the ball. Now I couldn't get this to do anything. I think it's a placeholder, um, but it's available as an LSO type uh, simulation and will be updated uh, later on. Okay, the speed's under control. We are now going to tip final up at the power up to capture about 140 to 150, 30 degrees angular bank and looking to roll out at 300 feet. You can see here if I pause quickly that the staple is nicely stable next to the flight path marker at 150 knots and the speed carrot is showing my power is set such that my speed should remain constant. I'm going to pick the nose up because I tipped final a little bit late, so I'm going to be low by the time I roll out. And the rest of the angular bank use is just to uh, make sure I line up properly with the runway. Okay, I'll pause it here. So once you've rolled out in a perfect world, roughly about where we are now, you have the minus five pitch attitude or pitch ladder overlaying your landing area. At this point, you should be able to put the flight path marker on the landing area and you'll fly the aircraft down. So this flight path marker is where the aircraft will impact if you do nothing else. Uh, and that is how a carrier landing is performed. It's impacting the runway in a controlled fashion. But I don't know if it's a limitation of the Microsoft Flight Simulator or a bug in this pre-release version of the F-35. But if I put the flight path marker on the landing area now, I'd actually land in the sea short of the carrier. So as you can see now, I've got the minus five on the landing area and I put the flight path marker roughly two to two and a half degrees uh, down. And that should hold this minus five roughly in the area of the uh, runway. So let's give that a go. So you can see, not the best. I landed way long, but uh, like I say, it's a simple, simple implementation of the arrest system. Uh, and to put the hook back up, or to put it down indeed, you press the hook button here, and if you want to assign it to a key, then it's the wing light uh, control assignment. Hook lights up, and I've heard a lot of requests to see if the wings fold. And they do indeed fold. So yeah, not the best landing. But with a bit of practice, you can get quite proficient at it. Next, we'll look at a takeoff. I better unfold the wings whilst I remember. Oh, not that one, not that one. Whoop. 
That will do. Yes, I'm a bit long, but you know what? It's fairly simple. I don't know what these guys are doing. These guys should be all be down this end helping me out, but there we go. Right, the parking brake is on for now. We're lined up as much as we need to be. I'm going to select the launch bar down, so you've got the white L bar illuminated. You'll see the symbol appear on the nose wheel here. You'll see launch bar extend and launch bar on the uh, caution and warning system. I release the parking brake. We are now good to go. That is it. The wings are unfolded. All you need to do now is power up. The aircraft will hold itself until the power is fully up to speed. Light back pressure. And off we go. Gear is up. Technique is to be, I think, at least a mile away from the a carrier upwind and less than 500 feet so you deconflict from anyone joining the pattern and that is the catapult launch really simple stuff the other techniques or other methods of launching if you want to try it with any aircraft in fact is the kinetic assistant and if you want to demo on how to do that put that in the comments and i'll be uh, sure to use that next time but that is the catapult departure and the arrester landing with a case one approach. I hope it was useful. Until the next time, take care, fly safe.